Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and welcome to part two of my webcast series on the Triaxial Consolidated Undrained Test. In part two, we'll be covering how to assemble the triaxial cell. So let's get started. Well, here we are ready to assemble our specimen into our triaxial cell. I've got all the stuff here I need to do that. I'll show you the details of that in just a moment. But to do this, I need to have the triaxial cell set up near the, this panel. This panel is what I'm going to use to provide both the confining stress to the specimen and also the back pressure inside the specimen. So this base of the cell will be hooked up to the panel, and I can't assemble it unless I'm near the panel. So to start this assembly, you're going to need to have the tubes to connect your base up to the panel. You're going to need one big tube like this. This is going to get connected to this center port here, and that'll get connected to one of these uh, lines up here, one of these sets of burettes, and that will be controlling the pressure and the fluid outside the specimen. And then we need two of these smaller tubes. Uh, one will be connected to the black line here, one will be connected to the red line there, and they will control the fluid pressure inside the specimen, one at the top and one at the bottom, and they'll also be connected to the panel. So before I get going, I'm going to come in close and show all the bits and pieces you need. It's really important when you start this part of it that you have everything you need right there uh, because uh, it's hard to run out and stop this in the middle of the process. First, I'm going to show you all the things we're going to need. We're going to need our triaxial cell base, the actual cell outs outside enclosure, the top cap, and then the three bars that hold it together. We're going to need a, a bunch of O-rings. We're going to need these two larger O-rings. These seal the outside belt of the bottom and top cap. These four uh, medium-sized O-rings are the ones we're going to use to seal the membrane to the pedestal at the bottom and to the top cap. And then these two really small O-rings and these two pieces of tubing go inside to seal the tubes on the top. We're going to need our top cap, which is right here. We're going to need two pieces of filter paper, one for the top and one for the bottom. We're going to need our porous stones. Now I have a whole beaker here full of the porous stones because I'm going to do a bunch of these tests. And these have been boiled for 10 minutes and then allowed to cool. That ensures that they're saturated and that there's no air in that water. We're going to need uh, a tube of vacuum grease to get our O-rings properly set up. We're going to need a bunch of strips of thin filter paper. They're going to go up the sides of the specimen to aid in drainage. And we're going to need our membrane, our membrane stretcher, and then we're going to need this tool to snap our O-rings on the bottom pedestal and the top cap when we get to that part. Uh, I've also got my drain lines already hooked up to the panel and I want to make sure these drain lines are completely saturated so I'm going to open them up and watch it make sure all the air bubbles come out of them until they're flooring clear and there's no more air in them. So now the first thing I've got to do is make sure that my o-rings have just a little bit of vacuum grease on them so that they'll seal properly. It doesn't take very much. Most people put on too much vacuum grease. You just need just the teeniest bit on your fingers and then you put it on the o-ring and then just make sure that it's a nice thin film all the way around. And as you do this, you shouldn't feel any grit or anything like that on the o-ring. If you feel grit, then your o-ring's not going to seal properly and you need to go clean it off and get rid of all the grit. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top o-ring. I'm going to get a little bit of vacuum grease on there. Make sure that it's all in there all the way around. There's a nice smooth layer and there's no gritty stuff on there. Um, you don't need to lubricate these O-rings uh, here that we snap on later. We do need to lubricate these two O-rings that go inside the top cap. So I'm going to get them lubricated. All right, and then the last thing we need to put some vacuum grease on is on the sides of the pedestal at the bottom and the sides of the top cap, because that's where this membrane is going to seal against. It's going to seal against those two parts. So again, I get a little bit of vacuum grease. I put it on here. I rub it all the way around until I have a nice thin layer all the way around. I do the same thing with the top cap. Put a little bit of vacuum grease on there. And then 
my thumb and my fingers. I go round and round to make sure I have a nice thin layer. Again, you want a thin layer. Most people put too much on. All right. So I now have all my O-rings lubricated and my top uh, and my bottom pestle lubricated. It's not really lubricated. I have vacuum grease on there to seal them off. And now what we got to do is go clean up our hands and wash up because we've got vacuum uh, grease all over our hands. So we'll go wash up and then I'll come back and finish the assembly. All right, now I'm ready to start assembling this specimen. The watch word in this part is saturation. We want to try and get as much of the air out of the system as possible when we start this because the system needs to be saturated in order for this to run. The first thing I'm going to do is connect this line from the triaxial panel to the base pedestal. And I'll just snug that up a little bit with this wrench. Now I've run a bunch of water through this line to make sure that there aren't air bubbles in the line. And now I'm going to open up the line to the base. And what's going to happen, the water is going to flow through that tube in the bottom and it's going to come up the base. And then what I'm trying to do is get this system so it's completely saturated. So I want the water to flow through the base, up through here, and then I'm going to put my finger across here so it flows down across and down this hole, and then it's going to come up this side. And I'm going to open this up and this jumper between these two will bring it up here and the water will flow out right there. And I just want to do this till there's no air uh, left in the system and I've got it really completely saturated. So I'm going to open this up here and you'll see the water pretty soon will come up here. There it is going across. So now I'm just going to hold my finger across there so that I get water flowing through here. And now you can see the water's coming through here and it's coming out the top. I'm looking to see if there's any bubbles. And I don't see any bubbles, so I'm going to shut that off and shut this off. So now I have the base good and saturated. Now I'm going to let a little more water get on the base so that I've got water all the way across the base. Let me do that. I'm going to let a little bit, a little more water come through the base. And now I've got a good men meniscus of water all the way across the base. So now I'm going to take my bottom stone out of here. And what I'm going to do is lay it on here and just carefully slide it across the base so that I don't introduce any air to the system there. And there's my bottom stone. And you can tell that it's really saturated. All right, the next thing that's going to go on is my first piece of filter paper. So here's my piece of filter paper. I'm going to dip it in the water to make sure that it's saturated. And I'm going to lay it carefully on top of the stone. Next, I'm ready for my specimen. Take the specimen out of its wrapping. And I'm going to carefully place the specimen on top of the filter paper. And take my second piece of filter paper and saturate that. Place it on top of my specimen. Just getting a little extra water on top of that. So it's in good contact with the specimen. Try and get rid of them, as many air bubbles as possible on the top. We're not going to be able to get rid of all of them, but we'll try and get rid of most of them. All right, I'll take my next stone, saturated stone, I'll put it on top of that. And then I take my loading cap and put it on top of the stone. Excellent. Now I've got to get my membrane here around the outside of this. And there's a really cool device to do that. It's called a membrane stretcher. It's a very interesting little device. I don't know who 
created this thing or dreamed it up, but they were brilliant. So, we now need to get uh, this membrane around the outside of the specimen. We're going to do it by putting it in this membrane stretcher, and we're going to use a vacuum to suck it out to the outside of the membrane stretcher, and that'll open it up so it'll fit over the specimen. So what I need to do is put this on the membrane stretcher. It's important you do this really neatly and get it even all the way around. If it's kinked up or something, it's not going to work right. So I get that side set up. I flip it over and I get this side all set up. Again, it's really important that the membrane is evenly pulled around and it's not twisted. And then when we have it pretty evenly on there, we're going to put a vacuum on this tube here and it's connected in there and it's going to suck the membrane out to the edges and make sure that it's big enough to go over the specimen. So I'm going to turn on my vacuum pump right now. That's going to make a little bit of noise. I'm going to hook this up to my vacuum line, open that valve, and then this is going to pull that membrane all the way out to the edges. See, it's pulled all the way out. And that's going to make it big enough to go over that. Once it's all nice and even and all pulled out, I'm going to close this valve. And I can disconnect this from the vacuum line and turn the vacuum line off. I usually leave it running, but for purposes here. Okay, so now I have this all ready to go on, but I'm forgetting something really important. I've almost forgot to put on all the filter paper strips will go along the sides, so I better do that. So in order to improve the drainage of the specimen, we're going to put filter strips all along the sides of the specimen that go from the, that connect from the stone on the top to the stone, uh, stone on the top to the stone on the bottom. What this is going to do is shorten the drainage path and make consolidation of the specimen much faster. So if you recall from your consolidation theory, remember the rate of consolidation is proportional to the square of the maximum drainage distance. So right now the maximum drainage distance is from the middle of the specimen either to the top or the bottom stone. And that's about two and a half inches. But when I put these strips on, the maximum drainage distance is going to be just about the radius of the specimen because it'll drain radially out to the edges. And so we're cutting the drainage distance by a factor of about two and a half inches down to just over an inch and a half. And so that's going to dramatically speed up the consolidation of the specimen. Okay, now I've got my strips all around there. I'm going to check my membrane still pulled out around there. So now I'm going to very carefully pull this, put this membrane that's stretched over top of my specimen. Take it down till it's just above 
the bottom cap, and then I just need to release the vacuum, and that membrane will pull back in and hold against the specimen. And now I just need to pull it off here and pull it down over the base pedestal. Make sure it's all around the base. And then I'll do the same thing at the top. I'm gonna pull that up. Make sure it comes over the top. Hold the top cap to make sure that it all gets on there right. And take that off. And voila, I have my membrane all around the specimen. Isn't that a neat trick? I love that little membrane stretcher tool. Now, I need to seal the membrane to the top cap and to the pedestal. And to do that, I'm going to use these O-rings. And I'm missing a tool to do that, so I'm going to pause and find my tool. So one of the tools you need that I forgot to get out at the beginning was this membrane, this, this O-ring stretcher. This is how we're going to snap the O-rings on the top and the bottom. What we're going to do is take the O-ring and we're going to stretch it around this tool. And that's going to make the O-ring nice and big enough to go over the edge here. And then I'm going to put this over the whole specimen and the membrane. And I'm going to take it down onto the pedestal down here and I'm going to snap the O-ring onto the pedestal to hold the membrane against the pedestal. So you do this kind of slowly until it snaps on there. I'm going to put two O-rings on the bottom and two O-rings on the top. We just want to make sure that it's actually all on the pedestal. Right, I'll put another one on there. second o-ring on there. Now I need to get two o-rings on the top. Go around and make sure that it's on there right. That looks good. So I've got the membrane uh, sealed onto the pedestal. I got it sealed onto the top cap. I'm just going to turn the excess membrane here in the top over so that we have access to the top cap. And make it nice and neat and even here because I like it that way, it's not that critical. All right, now I have my specimen properly assembled uh, on the pedestal with the top cap and the membrane on. I just have a couple things left to do. I've got to connect these tubes to the top. I don't want to forget to put these O-rings in to the top that seal the tube on and put this little stub of a piece of tube on there that just hold, helps hold the o-ring in okay and i'm going to put these two tubes uh, in you got to make sure they go all the way through the o-ring you can feel when they go through the o-ring there's a little bit of resistance and then you should push them until they go all the way down and they'll be actually touching the stone all right so i have it pretty much assembled um, I have um, the bottom pedestal is saturated. I've got my specimen in there. I've got the membrane on it sealed. I've got all the lines connected. I just need to assemble the cell itself. So I'm going to take my lubricated O-ring here for the base. I'm going to put it in the base here, make sure it's actually in the correct groove that it belongs in. Make sure that's all the way in there. I'm going to set My outside cylinder on there. Now I'm going to take the other O-ring and put it in the top and make sure it's completely in the top where it belongs. I'm going to set this on top. Now the tricky thing is here, I've got to get this piston 
has to be able to go into the top cap. So I'm not going to put it all the way into the top cap. I'm just going to slide it down a little bit. So it's now in the top cap. And now I want to put my connecting rods on. All right, and I have this all assembled. I'm ready to take it over to the triaxial panel and fill it full of water and get the specimen all saturated. So that's what we'll do next.